Revelation chapter 4 from verses 1. Ufunuo sura ya 4 kuanzia ule mstari wa kwanza. After this I looked and behold a door was open in heaven. Baada ya hayo naliona natazama mlango ukafunguka mbinguni. And the first voice which spake uh, which I heard was as it were a, of a trumpet talking with me. Na sauti ile ya kwanza iliyosikika kama sauti ya baragumu ikinena nami. Which said come up higher. Ikisema panda hata huku. And I'll show you things which must be hereafter. Nami nitakuonyesha mambo ambayo hayana budi kwako baada ya hayo. And immediately I was I was in the spirit. Na mara nalikuwa katika roho. And behold a door uh, uh, I was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven. Natazama kiti cha enzi kimewekwa mbinguni. And one sat on the throne. Na mmoja ameketi juu ya kile kiti. So a door was open in heaven. Kwa hiyo mlango ulikuwa umefunguliwa kule mbinguni. And then there was a, a voice speaking like a trumpet. Na kukuwa kuna sauti inanena kama baragumu. And immediately John was in the spirit. Na mara John alikuwa katika roho. And a door and and one was sitting on the throne Na in moja alikuwa amekaa kwenye kile kiti kule mbinguni. But he couldn't see this until he had to come up higher. Uh, lakini hakuweza kuona haya mpaka alipopanda kule juu. So I want to talk about come up higher. Kwa hiyo nataka kuzungumza kuhusu njoo hata huko juu. Let us let us pray. Na tuombe. Father we thank you for we have read what we believe to be your scripture. Baba tunakushukuru kwa sababu tumesoma kile ambacho tunaamini kuwa ni maandiko yako matakatifu. Anoint it now that it may be spirit filled spoken words. Ulitie mafuta ili liweze kujazwa na roho mtakatifu unapolinena. Father I pray that you may come in the service. Baba ninaomba kwamba utakuja katika ibada. Touch the young and touch the old. Uguse vijana na uguse wazee. Break the bread of life Uvu, that we may see you. Uvunje huu mkate wa wa uzima tuweze kukuona. Take me and hide me in the shadow of the Unichukue cross. Unichukue na unifiche katika uh, kile kivuli cha msalaba wako. Until Christ and him alone is the one that is projected. Mpaka tupale Yesu Kristo na yeye pekee ndio atakayekuwa akidhihirishwa mali yako. Once again I pray that you may touch my feeble body. Uh, ninaomba tena utaugusa mwili wangu mdhaifu that you, we may hear from you ili kwamba tukaweze kusikia kutoka kwako we ask these things in jesus christ name tunaomba yote katika jina la yesu kristo amen amina amen you may be seated tunaweza kuketi praise the lord bwana yesu asifiwe mm. come up higher panda hata huku juu Amen. Amen. Now the book of Revelation Sasa kitabu cha ufunuo is one of the most uh, complicated books. Ni moja ya vitabu ambavyo vinachanganya sana. It's one of those books you don't hear about them being preached in ni, the denomination. Ni moja ya kati ya vitabu ambavyo visikii vikihubiriwa katika madhehebu. So you may be new coming for the first time. Kwa hiyo unaweza kuwa mgeni hapo umekuja mara yako ya kwanza. Uh, don't worry. Usijali. Uh, if I say some things you don't understand yet. Uh, kama nikisema kitu ambacho bado ukielewi. The Holy Spirit is going to make you understand. Roho Mtakatifu atakufanya ukielewe. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's just been laid upon my heart. Uh, ninaongozwa tu moyoni mwangu that I I preach this message. Kwamba nihubiri huu ujumbe. Now it's not revelations. Kwa sasa sio mafunuo. It's revelation. Ni ufunuo. Uh, I've seen many times we say revelations. Nimeona mara nyingi tunasema mafunuo. But it's a revelation. Lakini ni ufunuo. The revelation is one. Kwamba ufunuo ni mmoja. And it's the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Na ni ufunuo wa Yesu Kristo. And uh, I believe when I started uh, the meeting na ninaamini nilipoanza mikutano i said there are three players nilisema kuna ma player um, uh, players or characters in uh, the book of revelation yes nilisema kuna wachezaji watatu katika kitabu cha ufunuo uh, we have jesus christ tunaye yesu kristo we have john tunaye yohana and we have the signifying angel na tunaye uh, malaika amen amen so it says that the the, the revelation 
of Jesus Christ which God showed unto John by an angel signifying it. So, so yes, that's correct. Achuonesa, like showing him. Yes. Ah. Onyesha. It sounds like Shona. Now, a signifying angel was the go between Alikuwa katia God and uh, uh, and John. Alikuwa katia Mungu na Yohana. And we have already learned that John is a prophet. Na tumesha jifunza kwamba ya Yohana alikuwa nabi. Because this same John is, is, is the one that Jesus loved the most. And this same John represents the bride. He represents you and me. So it shows that uh, John for him to understand the book of Revelation there's got to be a signifying angel. An angel that John can take John from Revelation chapter 1 to chapter 22. So we can we can call the book of Revelation uh, the orientation of the bride. Orientation, you know, when you go to school the first time they show you around the school. Okay. Yeah. Okay, tunaweza kuita ki kitabu cha ufunuo kwamba ni maonyesho ya bibi harusi. Amen. Amen. So the bride is being oriented through the Bible. Kwa hiyo bibi harusi anaonyeshwa kupita katika Biblia. Brother Branham tells us. Bi, uh, ndugu Branham anatuambia. The book of Revelation kitabu cha ufunuo is a book of symbols. Ni kitabu cha alama. You hear about trumpets. You are going to hear there, and I heard a lion. You are going to hear about uh, candlesticks. But these are not the actual things. They are symbols representing something. So these are things that are just representing something deeper. That's why when we read the other time that is, John said uh, he heard a voice speaking as it were the trumpet. And he turned to see the voice which had spoken unto him. But after he turned, he saw nothing. But the Bible says, being turned. Being turned. Now meaning that somebody had to turn John. He says, I saw seven golden candlesticks. That means John on his own is not able to see the thing that is in the book. There is need for an angel to walk him through the pages of the book. Then what's amazing? Come closer. Come, I want you here. Yes. That's right. <laughs> now, what's amazing is at the end of the book of Revelation, John wanted to worship the angel that showed him the book. And the angel rejected to be worshipped by John. He said, worship me not. For I am one of the fellow servants. I am a prophet. Worship God. That shows that the angel that showed John the book of Revelation was a man. 
Alikuwa ni mtu. John was showed the book by a man. Kwamba Yohana alionyeshwa kitabu na mtu. And this man was a prophet. Na huyu mtu alikuwa ni nabii. And this prophet. Na huyu nabii was so much like God. Alikuwa anafanana sana na Mungu. That people John himself. Kwamba Yohana mwenyewe. John is the bride. Oh, kwamba Yohana ni bibi harusi. He wanted to worship this prophet. Alitaka kumwabudu huyu malaika. And there's only one prophet that is promised to the Gentiles. Na kuna nabii mmoja tu aliyeidiwa kwa mataifa. And this prophet is the prophet of Malachi 4. Na huyu nabii ni nabii wa Malachi 4. So I can say kwa hiyo naweza kusema Malachi 4 Ma, uh, Malachi 4 is the prophet ni nabii that showed John aliyemwonyesha Yohana the book of revelation kitabu cha ufunuo mm, 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 amen mm, mm. that is why hiyo ndio sababu it's only the people ni watu pekee that have associated with Malachi 4 ambao wameunganishwa na Malachi 4 that can understand the book of revelation kifamu kitabu cha ufunuo anyone else everyone else na mtu yeyote yule is just guessing about it ana pita ana bahatisha tu kuhusu kitabu it's only the bride ni bibi harusi tu that has come in contact with John with, with Malachi 4 ambaye amba ameunganishwa na kitabu cha Malachi 4 hallelujah Everyone else says the book is a scary book. Wengine wote wanasema kitabu kinatisha. They 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 only preach the gospels. Wanahubiri tu zile injiri. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Eh Mathayo, Luka na Yohana. But there is a people in the land. Lakini kuna watu katika nchi who has received the amba, prophet. Ambao wamempokea nabii. And they have understood na wame what fahamu, the Bible is talking about. Na wamefahamu kile ambacho Biblia inasema. Mm. Amen. Now here in chapter 4 of Revelation. Sasa hapa katika sura ya aina ya ufunuo. I was tired I'm no longer tired. Nilikuwa nimechoka lakini sijachoka tena sasa hivi. Amen. Here in chapter 4. Hapa katika sura ya 4. The Bible says there was a window that opened. Biblia inasema kulikuwa na mlango. There was a door that opened. Kulikuwa na mlango uliofunguliwa. He says and I heard a voice speaking. Akasema nikasikia sauti ikinena. No, so so Revelation chapter Two, kwa hiyo ufunuo sura ya pili and revelation chapter three, na ufunuo sura ya tatu is the seven church ages ni nyakati saba za kanisa so 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 john he sees the seven church ages while he was at a certain dimension kwa hiyo yohana anaziona nyakati saba za kanisa akiwa katika kiwango fulani so the dimension that i want to preach in today kwa hiyo kiwango ambacho nataka kukihubiri leo because you can't preach this unless you are in that dimension kwa sababu wewe ukahubiri hiki kama hauko kwenye kile kiwango is not a church age dimension sio kiwango cha nyakati ya kanisa amen Uh, we, we are not in a church age dimension. Ah, tuko katika kipindi cha kanisa. Be, because in the church age, kwa sababu katika nyakati ya kanisa, John could see what was happening in the seven church ages. Kwa sababu Yohana angeweza kuona kinachotokea katika nyakati za kanisa. And writing to the messengers. Na angeandikia wale wajumbe. But here there is a door that opens in a higher dimension. Lakini hapa kuna mlango ambao unafungwa katika kiwango cha juu. And John is told that you you you, you, you can't write about this. Na Yohana na wazi kuandika kuhusu hiki if you remain where you are at kama utabaki hapo ulipo come up higher ndio hata huku juu so i want to say here in mwanza kwa sababu sasa nataka kusema hapa mwanza come up higher in mwanza ndio hapa ndio kama ndio hata huku juu and i will show you things natakuonyesha mambo and when we say things you should know it's mysteries yes. when we say things na tunaposema mambo we are talking about mysteries tunaongelea kuhusu siri so 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 uh, mysteries kwa hiyo mafumbo are things that are going to be here after kwa ndo mambo ambayo yanakwenda kudhihirishwa and the first thing that john saw na jambo la kwanza ambalo yohana aliona he saw one sitting on the throne aliona mmoja aketie kwenye kiti cha enzi now i want to say this sasa nataka kusema hivi as a declaration of faith eh, kama kutangaza kwa imani i want to say this unapologetically nataka kusema hili bila kuomba msamaha the first revelation 
Ufunuo wa kwanza the first revelation that you come across ufunuo wa kwanza ambao unakutana nao and you must understand na ambao unatakiwa kufahamu is the revelation of the god yet ni kufahamu uungu mkuu wa wa bwana Yesu Kristo if the god yet is not revealed to you kama uungu haujafunuliwa kwako forget about everything else sahau kila kitu kingine chochote john so Yohana aliona that there was one sitting on the throne. Kuna mmoja aketia kwenye kichwa. Brother, let me tell you. Ngoja nikwambie kitu. John did not see three. Yohana kuona watatu. Come here. Come here. Good. A, a bit in front of me. Good. This way. You see my mouth? It's easy for you to interpret. <laughs> John saw not didn't see three. Yohana kuona watatu. He saw one sitting on the throne. Aliona mmoja aketia kwenye kichwa enzi. If you are still seeing Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Kama bado unaona Baba, Mwana na Roho Mtakatifu. You are not yet in this dimension. Bado hauko kwenye hiki kiwango. This is not an old testament revelation. Hii sio ufunuo wa agano la kale. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is not even a revelation. Huu sio ufunuo of the time of Paul. Wa kipindi cha Paulo. Wait, 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 wait. Stephen was stoned and died. Wakati Stefano alipondwa mawe na kafa. And he said I saw the son of God sitting at the right hand of the father. Anasema alimuona mwana akiketi mkono wa kume wa baba. They had partial revelation. Walikuwa na ufunuo nusu. But in the fullness of revelation. Lakini katika ukamilifu wa ufunuo. In the book of revelation. Katika kitabu cha ufunuo. John said I saw one. Yohana anasema alimuona mmoja. There is no three gods. Hakuna Mungu watatu. There is no two gods. Hakuna Mungu wawili. There is only one God. Kuna Mungu mmoja tu. Th- that's why when brother Branham was preaching, ndio sababu ndugu Branham alipokuwa akihubiri. When he preached the church ages. Alipokuwa akihubiri nyaka saba za kanisa. The first message he preached. Ujumbe wa kwanza aliohubiri. He preached the revelation of Jesus Christ. Alihubiri ufunuo wa Yesu Kristo. Because the starting point kwa sababu sehemu ya kwanza is the god yet ni uungu mkuu when he preached the seven seals alivohubiri eh, miuri saba he didn't start with the first seal akuanza na muuri wa kwanza he started with god hiding himself in simplicity alianza na mungu akijificha katika urahisi revealing himself in the same akijizirisha katika hali hiyo ile your first bus stop sasa kituo chako cha kwanza is understanding who god is ni kufahamu mungu ni nani you cannot worship god uwezi kumwabudu mungu if you don't know who he is kama haujui yeye ni nani hallelujah hallelujah our revelation kwa hiyo ufunuo is to understand ni kufahamu who he is yeye ni nani what he is yeye ni nini and how he is doing it anafanyaje mambo Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you know who he is. Ukijua yeye ni nani? You will know his voice. Ukajua utajua sauti yake. For his voice is the voice of God. Kwa sababu sauti yake ni sauti ya Mungu. So when he comes and takes the pulpit. Kwa sababu akija kuchukua mimbara. And he says good morning friends. Akisema habari za asubuhi marafiki. You will know that is not a man. Utajua huyo sio mtu. That is God behind the man. Mungu nyuma ya mtu. When he comes wearing a suit. Akija amevaa suti a blue suit in mwanza akivaa suti ya blue mwanza and black shoes na viatu vya usi you don't say that is a brother from south africa au unasema huyo ni ndugu kutoka south africa yes the body is from south africa uh, yes mwili unatoka south africa but the voice lakini sauti is the voice of god ni sauti ya mungu come up higher jo hata ukuju from a dimension of church here kutoka katika kiwango cha makanisa we are rising above churches tunapanda juu ya makanisa oh hallelujah Hallelujah. You, you may sit a bit. Sit a little. Amen. Amen. Many times you hear that uh, somebody will, people will be talking. Eh mara nyingi utasikia watu wakizungumza. And then you hear that that is not the message. Nasikia ah huo sio ujumbe. And this one speaks he says that's not the message also. Mwingine anasema mmm huo sio ujumbe pia. So the question comes now. Sasa swali linakuja. You have been telling us what is not the message. Umekuwa ukituambia umekuwa mkituambia kitu kile ambacho sio ujumbe. Please tell us what is. Sasa hebu mtuambie ujumbe ni nini? Because you have clearly shown what is not. Kwa sababu umetuonyesha dhahiri kwamba hiki sicho. We want to understand what is the message. Tutaka tuone ujumbe ni nini? You see? Unaona? For you to understand the message. Kwa wewe kufahamu ujumbe. You say what is the message? Eh uh, kusema ujumbe ni nini? Uh, you, you you have to know what is the ministry. Unatakiwa kujua eh uh, 
Uduma ni nini? Of the messenger. Eh, uduma ya huyu mjumbe. Because the messenger and the message. Kwa sababu ujumbe na mjumbe is one. Ni mmoja. So 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 so. Kwa hiyo uh, your commission is your limitation. Eh, kwa hiyo eh, uh, there's no other way I can put it. <laughs> All right. Yes, yes. So, so when God commissions you, you cannot do anything beyond what you have been commissioned. When, when, when God called Moses, he says, I am taking you calling you so that you can take my people from bondage and to a land which I shall show thee. So he was not told that he was going to enter in. He was just going to be shown the land. So when he got to Mount Nebo, God said, go up the mountain. He went up the mountain. God showed him the land. And he died on the mountain. His commission was his climax. Now, when, when Joshua comes, he says, arise Joshua. And take these people and place them in the land. So, so the ministry of Moses would only come to a certain place. And the ministry of Joshua would then take it from there. Because it was a continuation of the commission. Mm -hmm. So your your calling is your limitation. Your revelation also is your limitation. So if you know little, or if you have a little revelation, that's your, that's your ceiling. You can't act above your revelation. That's why uh, they say you cannot live higher than your pastor. It's, it's, it's about the revelation. Because your pastor teaches you the revelation of the word. If you feel you have a revelation more than your pastor, start your own church. Because the commission becomes the limitation. So we want to understand what was what was the purpose of Brother Branham coming. What is his ministry? Now in the message, the first seal. Brother Branham says. Alright, see, take the book and of the seals and break them. Yes. Take the book and of the seals and break uh, and breaks. It, it takes the book and breaks them. And shows the seventh angel. So the book is broken. The seals are broken. And then it's shown to the seventh angel. Now brother Branham says. For this alone. Not, not anything else. This alone. The mysteries of God. Is the ministry of the seventh angel. The ministry of Brother Branham was the mysteries of God. Brother Branham did not come. To talk about women must dress modestly. That is the message of Moses. Moses is the one that says a woman shall not wear that which appertaineth unto a man. It was not Brother Branham's message. Paul is the one that says you shall not put earrings 
Paulo na nasema msiweke eleni and dress like the well na kuvaa kama ulimwengu with braided hair and so forth eh na nywele zilizokatwa na vitu zilizosukwa na vitu kama hivyo that is that is the message of paul huo ni ujumbe wa paulo that is not the message of brother branham huo sio ujumbe wa ndugu branham so we cannot limit the message of brother branham kwa hiyo hatuwezi kuwekea kikomo ujumbe wa ndugu branham to conduct and order katika maagizo na na utaratibu to say dress nicely come to church hey. early and so forth kwamba uvae vizuri ndio kanisani mapema na mambo kama hayo no 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 hapana hapana no. this alone ili pekee the mysteries of god eh, siri za mungu is the message of the messenger ni ujumbe wa mjumbe is the ministry of the seventh angel ni ni ni, ni huduma ya malaika wa saba that is in the message the first seal uiwa katika ujumbe wa eh, muuli wa kwanza now in the feast of the trumpets na sasa katika siku kuu ya baragumu 1964 eh, ile ule wa mwaka 64 paragraph 264 eh, tazama nataka kusema jambo eh, moja zaidi come now njo sasa don't miss this usilikose hili i want to say the same thing to you nataka kusema jambo hili kwako i want to say one more thing nataka kusema jambo moja zaidi come closely now Jo karibu sasa. Don't miss this. Usirikose hili. He says how striking. Inasema jinsi gani ninavyogonga. For the seventh angels. Kwa malaika wa saba. He says messenger of the seventh seal. Eh ni mjumbe wa 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 muuli wa kwanza, wa saba I mean. So the seventh angel. Kwa hiyo eh malaika wa saba he calls himself messenger of the seventh seal. Anajiita mwenyewe ni mjumbe wa muuri wa says, saba. He says his message in Revelation 10. Anasema ujumbe wake katika ufunuo kuu was the seventh seal. Ulikuwa ni muhuri wa saba to the seven trumpets. Kwa zile baragumu saba. So in other words what the seventh seal is to the Gentiles is what the seventh trumpet is to the Jews. What the seventh seal is to the Gentiles? Kile ambacho eh, muuli wa saba ulicho kwa wa, wa, mataifa is what the seventh trumpet is to the Jews. Ni kile ambacho zile baragumu saba linachomaanisha kwa Wayahudi. But he says the, the seventh angel's message which is Lakini the messenger. Lakini anasema eh, eh, ujumbe wa malaika wa saba he is the messenger of the seventh seal. Ni mjumbe wa ule muuri wa saba. So brother Branham kwa hiyo ndugu Brana he came to preach the seventh seal alikuja kuhubiri muuri wa saba because under the seventh seal kwa sababu chini ya muuri wa saba is where seven thunders utter their voices ndio hapo eh, zile ngurumo saba zilivotoa sauti zao under the seventh seal chini ya muuri wa saba and that is the message of brother Branham na huo ndio ujumbe wa ndugu Branham if we preach anything else outside of this kama tukihubiri chochote nje ya hiki we are not preaching the message of William Branham hubiri ujumbe wa ndugu Branham because the message of brother Branham kwa sababu ujumbe wa ndugu Branham is the mysteries of God ni siri za Mungu can you say amen unaweza kusema amina can you say amen unaweza kusema amina if you are hearing me say amen kama unanisikia sema amina yes amina you have to understand inabidi ufahamu that the mysteries of God kwamba siri za Mungu are the message of the hour ni ndo Ah the message of the hour. Ndo ujumbe wa wakati. That's what brother Branham came to do. Ndo hicho ndugu Branham alikuja kufanya. So what is the seals? Kwa hiyo si hii miuri ni nini? Because in the seals was contained the thunders. Eh kwa sababu katika miuri kulikuwa kuna zile ngurumo. So let us understand because he says the messenger of Malachi 4. Sasa natufahamu kwa sababu anasema eh mjumbe wa Malaki 4 and Revelation 10 na ufunuo 10 was sent to do two things alitumwa kufanya mambo mawili one according to Malachi 4 moja kulingana na Malaki 4 turn the heart of the children back to the fathers kurudisha mioyo ya watoto kwa baba zao and two according to Revelation 10 na mbili kulingana na ufunuo 10 reveal the mysteries of the seven thunders kufua kufunua of the seven eh, preach the mystery of seven thunders ni ile siri ya ngurumo 7 which are the revelation relations contained in the seven seals ambazo ni mafunuo yaliyo ndani ya miuri saba and it is by these divinely revealed mystery truths na ni kupitia huu ukweli uliofunuliwa kiungu that the hearts of the children kwamba mioyo ya watoto shall be turned back to the fathers kwa baba 
Your heart is not going to be turned by a Pentecostal message. Healing revivals. They are Pentecostal revivals. Because they are addressing only your flesh. But the mysteries of God. They address the inner man. We are not here to compete with Pentecostals. Hear me and hear me well. We are not here to compete with the Lutherans and the Westerns. We are higher. We are called higher than denominations. We have received the revelations that were contained in the seven seals. We are in the ministry of the literal turning of the heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother, sister, if the message was anything less than this, I would have not believed it. We have not come here to believe a more polished way of a prayer life. No, 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 no. Pentecostals are having that. We are not just here to wear long skirts, sisters. Even uh, women from the Catholic are doing that. I don't know if you have white garment churches here in, in that worship under the tree. They also wear long skirts. So, so that is not a standard of going into heaven. The message is the mysteries of God. And you start by seeing who God is first. Yes. You start by seeing who God is first. Yes, sir. Who God is. What he is today. Brother, we are believing it higher. But God visited men again. In the vessel of men again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That signifying angel was so much one with God until John wanted to worship him because the one that John saw in Revelation 4 when they got to Revelation 21 John compared to Revelation 4 and this signifying angel he could see no difference uh -huh. Amen. that's why some people who come to church and will say I love that church but it looks like they worship the, 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 the prophet no we don't worship the prophet but uh, you see I, I can forgive a man who almost wants to worship the prophet than a man that disrespects him because disrespecting shows your lack of revelation. Brother Branham says, in the message is the rising of the sun. For the whole word of God is Christ. And Christ is the seals that was opened. What is the opening of the seals then? It's revealing Christ. Amen. The seals did not reveal Jesus. They revealed Christ. And Jesus is the body that Christ lived in. Jesus died. And Jesus was born. So Jesus at the beginning. And Jesus at an end. But Christ was there before Jesus was made manifest. And the preaching of the seventh seal reveals that. 
kuhubiriwa kwa kwa miuri saba kulidhihirisha hilo. That's why we are not like Pentecostals. Ndio maana hatuko kama Pentecost. We don't just say to say Jesus. Hatupo kusema Yesu. Jesus. Yesu. We are saying the Lord Tunasema Jesus Christ. Tunasema Bwana Yesu Kristo. Because Christ kwa sababu Kristo was the eternal part. Ai ilikuwa ni ile sehemu ya ndani. That dwelt bodily. Ambayo ilikuwa ndani ya ule mwili. In the body of Jesus. Katika mwili wa Yesu. God created himself a temple. Mungu alijitengenezea kalu. And in the baptism in River Jordan. Na kabatizwa katika uh, ule mtoto. Christ entered into that body. Kristo akaingia kwenye ule mwili. That's why the Bible says. Ndio maana Biblia inasema. The fullness of the God yet. Utimilifu wa Mungu. Dwelt in him bodily. Uli ulikaa ndani yake kikamilifu. Can you say amen? Amen. The fullness of the God yet. Ukamilifu wa Mungu. Which is the Christ. Amboni Kristo. Dwelt in him and that Christ now we are Christ is what we call Melchizedek because Jesus had a beginning and an ending but Christ has no beginning and an ending Christ is Melchizedek that's why we say Melchizedek king of Salem Farme wa Salem priest of the most high god eh akuani walie juu without mother without father asiye na mama asiye na baba without beginning of days no ending of life asiye na mwanzo wa siku asiye na mwisho who is this melchizedek who you merik zedek ni nani this melchizedek is christ who you merik zedek ni christo this melchizedek is here who you merik zedek yuko hapa this melchizedek is revealed he is always there. Yuko hapa siku zote. You need a man. Amen. Unahitaji mtu. You need a man. Unahitaji mtu. To point you to him. Akuonyeshe kwake. If you read in the Old Testament. Kama utasoma kanuni la kale. The tape says. Eh kanda zinasema. The tape says in the Old Testament. Kanda zinasema katika kanuni la kale. Abraham met Melchizedek. Kwamba Ibrahim alikutana na Melchizedek. After the slaughter of the king and he paid the tenth unto him and then Melchizedek gave him wine and bread that's what that's what the tape says but when Paul writes about the same issue it looks like he's adding sugar because the bible never said he had no beginning of days no ending of life but when Paul by revelation Looked at this man. Looked at this man. He said he had no mother. He had no father. He had no beginning of days. And he had no ending of life. And yet he went and he ate food. Ah, 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 ah. And brother Branham comes and preaches. He doesn't say who is that Melchizedek. Asemi, huyu Melchizedek, yule Melchizedek ni nani? He says who is this? Anasema huyu ni nani? To show that Melchizedek. Kuonyesha kwamba Melchizedek is back again. Amerudi tena. Who is this Melchizedek? Huyu ni nani? Who takes on dust? Anachukua udongo. And he blows into dust. Na anapuliza katika udongo. And he gets into dust. Na anakuja katika udongo. And he starts walking. Na anaanza kutembea. And Abraham says. Na Ibrahim anasema. Please come here. Tafadhali njo. And they got there. Na walipofika pale. And they kill a fetid calf. Na wakaumchinja mwana kondoo. And then there is milk and cheese and cakes. Na kuna maziwa pale na siagi. And they are eating. Na wanakula. And you know what? Unajua nini? Abraham said my lord. Ibrahim akasema bwana wangu. Not my lord. Sio bwana zangu. I I almost can speak in tongues. Listen Amen. to me. Amen. <laughs> Abraham. Ibrahim. He saw three men. Aliona watu watatu. But he said my lord. Lakini akasema bwana wangu. He didn't say father son and holy ghost. Akusema baba mwana na roho mtakatifu. He didn't say my lord. Akusema bwana zangu. He says my lord. Akasema bwana wangu. Singular. Moja. He knew that all the three of them. Alijua wote watatu. With the manifestation of one God. Ilikuwa ni udhihirisho wa Mungu mmoja. And he said come. 
akasema njo let us have some food and while they are sitting there na walipokuwa wameketi pale showing their food na wakifurahia chakula brother branham says abraham's neighbor ndugu branham anasema is abraham's neighbor eh jirani wa ibrahim could ask him Angeza kumuuliza Who is the visitor that has come? Huyo mgeni aliyekuja ni nani? And Abraham would say Na Ibrahim angesema God is in my house. Mungu yuko ndani ya nyumba yangu. And then they say What what do you mean? Unamaanisha nini? Remember Abraham had been preaching 25 years that is going to have a baby. Eh kumbuka Ibrahim alikuwa amehubiri miaka 25 kwamba anaenda kupata mtoto. And he had no baby. Na hakuwa na mtoto. So people were thinking Abraham is not well. Watu walikuwa wanafikiri Ibrahim akili zake haziko nzuri. Now vizori. Abraham comes and he says God. Sasa Ibrahim anakuja anasema Mungu is in my house. Yuko ndani ya nyumba yangu. They say do you mean a child of God? Akauliza unamaanisha mwana wa Mungu. He says not the child of God. Akasema hapana sio mwana wa Mungu. The, the God that created you. Nasema Mungu ali kuumba wewe and that created me na mbali niumba mimi and brother branham says na ndugu branham anasema and the friend would ask which one where where where, where is the god where in the, which one na mtu angeuliza yuko wapi kati yao ni yupi he says abraham could look in the tent ibrahim angeza kuona kupitia kwenye ema and say you see that one that is uh, shooing the flies unamuona yule ambaye anafukuza inzi yule that one is that yule ndio mungu Amen. Ah. Uh, <laughs> can you just say amen? Hey, mnaweza kusema amina. Anafukuza enzi na sasa. That one. That one. Yule pale. That one. Yule is God. Yule ndo Mungu. Believe us how this. <laughs> can you believe it? Unaweza kuamini hilo? the first place sehemu ya kwanza that abraham arrived in his revelation alipofika kwenye mfumo uh, wake ni kujua ule uungu wa mungu he started by saying my lord alianza kwa kusema bwana wangu when you come up higher unapokuja hata huko juu the first place sehemu ya kwanza is understanding the god ni kujua uungu mkuu that god is one not three kwamba mungu ni moja na sio tatu amen We have a lot of Pentecostal message believers. Tuna waaminiwa wengi wa Kipentecost. That believes the manifestation of God the Pentecostal way. Ambao wanaamini kufunuliwa kwa kwa namna ya Kipentecost. Read the the message with a virgin mind. Yes. You must read the message with a virgin mind. Unatakiwa usome ujumbe ukiwa na akili ya kibikira. So that you can understand. Ili uweze kufahamu what the prophet is saying. Kile nabii anachosema. Let's let's move a little bit. Hebu tuendelee mbele kidogo. So brother Branham says. Kwa hiyo ndugu Branham anasema in the bridge between the seven katika seven pen, church ages. Pen, pengo kati ya nyakati saba and the seventh seal. Na miuli saba. Now this message. Sasa huu ujumbe the bridge ule upengo lile pengo is the message of the seventh seal ni ujumbe wa muuli wa saba no okay Why, what, what do you mean pastor sasa mchungaji unamaanisha nini you see unaona brother branham says when jesus appeared to the two that were going to a mouse eh eh yesu alipotokea walikuwa walikuwa kukenda emao he says he preached for six fellows is for six hours anasema alihubiri kwa masaa sita So he says those six hours. Sasa anasema yale masaa sita. He, he was expounding to them. Alikuwa akiji about himself. Akijielezea mwenyewe. So he is 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 revealing is breaking the word revealing and showing. Alikuwa akivunja akivunja neno na kuonyesha about himself. Kuhusu yeye mwenyewe. Without saying I am talking about myself. Bila kusema naongea kuhusu mimi. So these these people say to him sasa watu wakamwambia when he appeared alipotokea he says what manner of speech is this that you are having one with another akauliza hivi tuna mazungumza namna gani kati yetu and they said are you a stranger in jerusalem akawakamuuliza hivi wewe ni mgeni katika yerusalemu have you not heard about jesus of nazareth hujasikia kuhusu yesu wa nazareth so they were preaching the jesus of nazareth kwa hiyo walikuwa wanamhubiri yesu wa nazareth and he kept quiet na yeye alikuwa amekaa kile and they started saying jesus of nazareth na wakaendelea okay, kusema yesu wa nazareth how they, they was supposed to be a prophet At- kuwa nabii and the messiah to save us na masii wa kutuokoa but now he's dead lakini amekufa and we are going back na tunaenda kule nyumba tena he says and he expounded unto them about 
Christ. Na akajieleza kwao kuhusu Kristo. When he appeared he didn't join the conversation about the Jesus of Nazareth. Alivyo atokea hakuzungumzia kuhusu Yesu wa Nazareth. Because the ministry of Jesus of Nazareth is over. Kwa sababu kwa sababu huduma ya Yesu wa Nazareth imeisha. But the ministry of Christ lakini huduma ya Yesu Kristo was there before Jesus of Nazareth. Ilikuepo kabla ya Yesu. My Bible says Biblia yangu inasema Moses when he was still a, a prince in Egypt Musa alivyokuwa bado ni when he was still young so, alivyokuwa bado mdogo kule he, he refused to be called a prince in Egypt a prince of Pharaoh alikuwa anaandaliwa kuwa alikataa kuitwa mwana wa mfalme kule It says but he chose to suffer the reproach of Christ lakini alikubali kupata mateso ya Yesu Kristo So that means Christ was there Kwa sababu hiyo inamaanisha Kristo alikuepo pale Before Mary conceived Jesus in the womb Kabla hata Mariamu hajabeba ujauzito So when he appears to these two Sasa alivotokea hawa wili, He speaks to them about Christ Anaongea kuhusu Kristo For six uh, hours for, kwa masa for, 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 for six hours Kwa masa sita And he, in the seventh hour Na katika ile saa la saba at evening time wakati wa jioni in the evening time katika wakati wa jioni it shall be light kutakuweko nuru he did as if he wants to proceed alifanya kama anataka kupitiliza and then he came back na baada ya karudi nyuma he broke the bread akavunja mkate and they realized it was him na wakagundua alikuwa ni yeye through the message that he has been preaching kupitia ujumbe aliyokuwa akihubiri they started going back from 1947 wakaendelea kutoka 1947 1947 to 1965 mpaka 1965 and they realized it has been Christ that has been speaking to us la kwa gundua kwamba alikuwa ni Kristo aliyekuwa akizungumza but our eyes were withholding lakini macho yetu yalikuwa yamefumbwa so the first message he preached was kwa hiyo ujumbe wake wa kwanza aliyohubiri was the message of the seventh seal ulikuwa ni ujumbe wa muuli wa saba and then he starts going with them 1 2 3 4 5 6 akaanza kwenda 1 2 3 4 5 6 but the first message lakini ujumbe wa kwanza is the seventh seal ni muuli wa saba so i am saying kwa hiyo the message of the bridge between the seals Kwa hiyo ujumbe wa wa wapengo kati ya nyakati saba nyakati saba na muli saba is the message of the seventh seal ni, ni ujumbe wa uh, wa, wa muli wa saba watch jesus also preached it there hicho ambacho yesu kristo alihubiri pia jesus the bible says he preached unto them yeah biblia inasema yesu aliwahubiria from moses kutoka kwa msa and the prophets na manabii and how na jinsi the son of man is supposed to suffer this jinsi ambavyo mwana wa adamu atakavyoenda kutekwa so jesus was preaching the bridge between the old testament prophet kwa and ye, the coming messiah kwa hiyo uh, yesu kristo alikuwa anahubiri kuhusu the bridge between the old testament prophets pengo kati ya uh, unabii wa agano la kale and the coming messiah na ukuja kwa masihi that was the message of the seventh seal huo ulikuwa ni ujumbe wa malaika wa saba the first seal to be revealed muuli wa kwanza kufunuliwa is the seventh seal ni muuli wa saba it's not the first seal sio muuli wa kwanza haleluya amina on that one please. amen amina it Yes. Amen. The the Bible Biblia uh, is is uh, says brother Bram says the seven seals uh, and ndugu bwana anasema muuli wa saba were, were in a scroll like manner. Ah ndugu bwana anasema miuli ilikuwa katika eh, gombo lilo lilo kunjwa namna hii. So so the first seal kwa hiyo muuli wa kwanza was written uliandikwa and it was wrote na ulikuwa umezungushwa and it was sealed na ilikuwa imefungwa he says and he took the second seal na aka, aka weka muuli wa pili on top of the first seal juu ya muuli wa kwanza and wrote it na akafunga akazungusha and sealed it na akafunga the third wa tatu on top of the second juu ya ule wa pili the fourth one on top of the third juu ya ule wa tatu the fifth watano on top of the fourth juu ya ule wa nne the sixth wa sita on top of the fifth juu ya ule wa tano the seventh wa saba on top of the sixth juu ya ule wa sita so the first seal to be revealed kwa hiyo ile muuli wa kwanza ufunuliwe is the last seal to be sealed ni wa mwisho kuonekana okay all right 
All right, all right, all right. Amen. Let me show you something. Let's, let's, let's go in the Bible. Revelation chapter 6. When, and when the lamp opened one of the seals, it does not say first there. It says one of. So which one of the which one? <laughs> listen, 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 listen. That's why I'm saying the first message is actually the seventh seal. Oh, no, no, no. Listen, listen. Oh, this is coming fresh. But the Bible, Brother Branham says, the book of Genesis opens with the seventh seal. In the Garden of Eden, the first thing that we see in the ministry of God is a wedding. Wedding, wedding. Yes. And is bringing Adam and Eve together, the man and the woman. There is a, there is a marriage that's in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, the first miracle of Jesus is at the wedding of Cana. In the Third Testament, when Brother Branham is coming to preach the seven seals, it's the message of God hiding himself in simplicity and, and revealing himself in the same. Brother Branham delayed to come to the pulpit. And when he came to the pulpit, he said, you may be wondering why I took time. I was conducting a wedding. What is the Bible telling us? This is not a man. You need to come up higher so that you can see the way that it is. Christ is about to be revealed. Christ is about to be revealed. Right before the people. And he preaches the message of the preach. What was the message of the preach? He is revealing Christ. He is saying, I can see the lamb. He says, Revelation chapter 10 is the same as Revelation chapter 5. It's the same as Revelation chapter 5. The, the seals are broken. The lamb has taken the book. I see him stepping off the mercy seat. He's saying he's coming to claim his subjects. So, so the, the message of the breach is the message of the book that was sealed and revealed. And then Brother Branham comes and he says, I'm going to call you bride so that you can understand. Amen. I am going to call you bride so that you can understand. You are no longer girlfriend anymore. You are not girlfriend. You are now bride. Because bride is the one you tell the secret. So with the change of position comes change of responsibility. With change of name comes the blessing. I'm going to call you Israel, you are no longer Jacob. I'm going to call you Peter, you are no longer Simon. I'm going to call you Paul, you are no longer Saul. I'm going to call you Abraham, you are no longer Abraham. Uh, I'm going to call you Sarah, not Sarah. Why? Because this change of name will bring you to understanding of what is going to come. And, and Brother Branham preaches first seal, second seal, third seal, fourth seal, fifth seal, sixth seal. So when he gets to sixth seal, he says tomorrow morning, 
Akasema kesho asubuhi we are going to have questions and answers. Tutakuwa na maswali na majibu on the seven seals. Kuhusu muhuri wa saba. Okay, I'm, okay. We, if we have gone to school just from to, up to grade 3. Kama umesoma shule mpaka darasa la 3. If we have gone to school up to just grade 3. Kama umeenda shule mpaka tu darasa la 3. He said first seal second seal up to 60. Akasema muhuri wa kwanza mpaka ule wa 6. And he says tomorrow we are going to have questions and answers. Akasema na kesho tutakuwa na maswali na majibu on the seven seals. Kuhusu muhuri miuli saba. What? Kuhusu muhuri wa saba, yes. So so there was no person who said but you have not preached the seventh one. Lakini hakuna mtu aliyeuliza lakini hujahubiri muhuri wa saba. How can we have and answers on all of Ina kuhaje tunakuwa na maswali kwa yote. Mpaka miuli saba. The seventh one was already preached. Amen. Inakuwaje tunakuwa na maswali kwa muhuri wa saba ambao bado haujahubiriwa? He says so, so, the seventh was only preached in the evening. Kwa hiyo wasa, the seventh was only preached in the evening. Kwa hiyo wasaba walikuwa na unahubiriwa jioni. But he had already questions and answers on the seven seals. Lakini alikuwa na maswali tayari kuhusu miuli saba. Because the first one kuhusu muuli wa saba kwa sababu wa kwanza The first one to be opened. Kwa sababu wa kwanza kufunuliwa was the seventh one. Ulikuwa ni wa saba. That's why he could have questions and answers. Ndio maana alikuwa na maswali na majibu. When he came to preach the seventh one. Anapokuja kuhubiri ule wa saba which everyone was waiting for. Ambao kila mtu alikuwa anausubiri. He just said go and live a humble Christian life. Anasema nende mkaishi maisha manyenyekevu ya Kikristo. I feel checked not to say anything about it. Ninajisikia kutosema chochote it is not open to the public kwa watu kwa umma amen because you had already missed it kuna watu walikuwa wameshalikosa tayari when the service started he started with it alipoanza kuhubiri alianza nani so when he saying it's not open to the public anaposema hajafunguliwa kwa umma the question now comes is are you, are you public or are you private? Sasa wewe unahubiri kwa umma au binafsi? Did, did you interpret that correct? Yes, yes. Did, is it, are, are, you, are you public or are you private? Wewe una wewe ni wa umma au Because it's not open to the public. Kwa sababu hajafunguliwa kwa umma. And many people left there and said it's not open. Na watu wengi walipaka sema hajafunguliwa. And you know what? Unajua kwa nini? They were right. Walikuwa sawa because they are public. Kwa sababu wao ni umma. But you I'm calling you bright. Sasa wewe nakuita bibi harusi. So that you can understand. Ili uweze kuelewa. Do you is open? Kwako umefunguliwa. The time is closed. They Kwa can see it. Hawezi kuona. Amen. It's a secret communication. Ni mawasiliano ya siri. Brother Branham says. Ndugu Branham anasema. God has got three thrones. Mungu ana viti vya enzi vitatu. One throne was the in heaven. Kimoja kilikuwa mbinguni. The second throne was in Jesus Christ. Kingine ndani ya Yesu Kristo. And he says the third throne is in men. Na cha tatu kiko ndani ya watu. And whenever God wants to speak. Na Mungu anapotaka kunena. He sits on his throne. Anakaa kwenye kiti chake cha enzi. And I'm here to tell you that in heaven God is not speaking from heaven. Na nataka nikwambie kwamba Mungu haongei kutokea mbinguni. And God is not speaking from Jesus. Na Mungu haongei kutokea kwa Yesu. We are now living in the days of the third throne. Tunaojiishi katika kipindi cha kiti cha enzi cha tatu. That's why John when when the when the door was opened. Ndio maana Yohana mlango ulipofunguliwa. He says I saw a throne. Akasema nimeona kiti cha enzi. I saw a throne. Nimeona kiti cha enzi. And one was sitting on the throne. Na ameketi pale. When brother Branham came to preach. Na ndugu Branham anapokuja kuhubiri. It was the throne preaching to us. Ilikuwa ni kiti cha enzi kitakitubiria. And you cannot understand. Na uwezi kuelewa. Unless you yourself you are also a throne mpaka pale na wewe ukiwa ni kiti cha enzi because there is a way that kings communicate kwa sababu kuna namna ambavyo wafalme wanawasiliana the bible says i have made you kings and priests biblia inasema nimewafanya kuwa nyie wafalme na wana wafalme meaning that you also have a throne kwa hiyo nyie pia mna kiti cha enzi and in the old testament na katika agano la kale when a king wants to speak to another king na mfalme anataka kuongea na mfalme mwingine they say there was another king in uganda the king in 
Tanzania writes a letter. Na, na mfalme wa Tanzania anamwandikia yule wa Uganda. And when he writes the letter. Anapoandika ile barua. He seals the letter. Anaitia muhuri. And he gives it to the messenger. Na nampa mjumbe. The messenger knows that the message is important. Na mjumbe anajua ule ujumbe ni muhimu. But the messenger does not know what the message is. Lakini ule mjumbe ajui ule ujumbe unasema nini. It's communicated it's sealed from this king. Wao ujumbe umeutiwa muhuri kwa huyu mfalme. It goes to the other king during the process it's Una, sealed. Unaenda kwa yule mfalme mwingine ukiwa umetiwa muhuri. But when it arrives to this king. Lakini inapofika kwa huyu mfalme. It's unsealed. Inafunguliwa. It's red. Inasoma. He also writes a letter. Na yeye pia anaandika barua. And he seals the letter. Anaitia barua ile muhuri. And he sends it to the other king. Na anapeleka kwa yule mfalme mwingine. And the messenger runs with it. Na mfalme mwingine And the message is sealed. Na mjumbe mwingine anakimbia nao ujumbe ukiwa umefungwa. Are you hearing me? Unanisikia? We have received the sealed message. Tumepokea ujumbe uliofungwa. But when it got to us. Lakini ulipotufikia. Because we are kings. Kwa sababu sisi ni wafalme. We managed to open it. Na tunapofungua. We have seen what the message says. Tumeona kila ujumbe unachosema. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the hidden manna. Ni mana iliyofichwa. This is not obvious manna, brother. Sio mana iliyowazi. This is a hidden manna. Ni mana This is hidden communication. Hii ni ni mahusiano yaliyofichwa. It's a language between a husband and a wife. Ni lugha kati ya mwana mume na mke. A husband can walk into the lounge. Eh, mume anaweza kutembea in the living room. Can walk into the living room. Katika chumba chao cha kile cha kulala. And just say in the, in the living room living room not bedroom living room ah, okay sebleni yes he can walk in the living room where Oyo, the kids are sitting mwanaume anaweza kutembea pale sebleni wale watoto wanapokaa na sitting. wageni wanapokaa and he says to the wife na anamwambia mke wake where are my socks socks zangu ziko wapi where are my socks socks zangu ziko wapi and then he leaves na anaondoka And then you hear the mother saying Na utasikia mama anasema Good night everybody let us now go to our rooms Kwa elini kila mtu tunatwende kwenye vyumba vyetu Every time the father comes and talks about socks we are told to go and sleep Sasa watoto wanashangaa kila wakati baba akiulizia socks tunaambiwa tukalale The children don't know Watoto waelewi But the mother knows Lakini mama anajua What the father is saying Baba anamaanisha nini It's The, the message of the hour ujumbe wa wakati is written in between the lines ume, umeandikwa katikati kati, kati ya mistari it's, it's disguising the truth una unaficha kweli fulani just like what we came here to do kama tulichokuja kufanya tu hapa we have come to disguise the truth tumekuja kuonyesha ukweli hey samuel 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 the Sa- prophet uh, uh, nabi Nabii Samuel he says stop, stop stop mourning for Saul. Anasema usimwombolezee Sauli. I have rejected him from being king. Nimemkataa kuwa mfalme. So so you are telling me there are people that are going to Saul's palace. Unataka kuniambia kuna watu wanaenda kwenye eh kwenye ikulu ya Sauli. And saying oh king. Wanasema oh mfalme. And yet there is one person. La bado kuna mtu mmoja who is busy mourning that um, that person is not king anymore ambaye uh, yuko anaomboleza lakini is is mourning that he is not king you are saying he's king but he's not king unasema ni mfalme lakini sio mfalme so samuel yet a revelation a secret kwa hiyo samuel alikuwa na ufunuo a, about so kuhusu sauli that so himself didn't know la wewe ambao hata sauli mwenyewe hakujua and everyone else didn't know na mtu yeyote hakujua it was him and god ilikuwa ni yeye na mungu so he is crying nobody understands why is he crying na alikuwa analia na kuna mtu akawa anajua kwa nini analia and god says i have rejected him na mungu anasema nimemkataa from being the king kuwa mfalme now use samuel sasa wewe samuel the horn of oil we uchukue ile pembe ya mafuta and go to the house of jesse na uende kwenye nyumba ya yese and anoint a man that i have chosen for myself na ukam ukam pake mafuta mtu ambaye nimemchagua mwenyewe and then samuel said ah na, this is a dangerous issue na na samuel anasema ah ah hili ni jambo la hatari sana because if the people see me akasema watu wakinio going to the house of the bethlehemite 
There is going to be a problem. Because they know the, the meaning of the horn of oil. So, so if they see me, they know that there is another king. That is going to be anointed. And he said, you know that Saul is a murderer. He is going to kill me. But here was the mystery. The ministry of Samuel was not only a prophet. He was also a priest. So God says, don't worry. When you are going there, you, you should take a heifer. Take a cow and go there. So when everybody sees you, if they see the cow, they think you are in the ministry of the priest. But disguised in the ministry of the priest is the ministry of the Amen. 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 May God bless you. Are you seeing it? So he is going there with that said the Lord. But the ministry of the prophet is hidden. He is a Meaning is a man with a ministry within a ministry. And at the same time, Samuel was the first king of Israel. That was rejected. Because God told Samuel that when they have rejected you, they have rejected me. So Samuel he had a multi ministry. He had a ministry that was that was in many folds. He was a king. He was a priest. He was also a prophet. But the prophetic ministry was always hidden. And the horn of oil that brings the anointing. Of the king whose name is adopted in the millennium. I know that's a bit too much. Who is holding the anointing that is going to anoint a king and this king's name is the name that will live up until the millennium so that anointing has to be hidden it cannot be made obvious so he arrives at the house of Jesus and he starts looking at the people there hallelujah and the people in Mwanza. Mwanza. Just like Jesus started presenting different types of men. And Samuel was waiting for the sign from the heaven. He's is waiting for something to happen. And then Jesus brings this one. He says, look at Eliab. Look at his shoulders. Look at his height. Look at his education. Samuel said, no. Bring number two. Samuel said no. And then he said, okay, fine, everyone. Everyone is finished. And there was a question. Is there not any other? Is there not any other? He says there is one. But they are having church in upstairs somewhere. There, there is one, but he was a fisherman. There is one, but he is preaching on the radio. He says maybe just bring him. And while he was coming, the heavens came down. And when the heavens came down, Samuel said, Samuel Hallelujah! Everybody thought he was a priest. But they didn't know. There was another ministry that was hidden behind that ministry. Can you say amen? Behind the ministry of William Branham was the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. Many times. 
Many times people came to church. They thought they were going to listen to Brother Billy. And one day Brother Billy took the pulpit. And he says by the grace of God. I have opened the seals for God. That is blasphemy. Because there's no man that can open the seals. We were told the lamb is the one that opened the seals. But Brother Billy Branham took the pulpit. He says, I open the seals for God. Why did he do that? Because in Revelation chapter 5, the scripture never asked for the lamb. It says, Is there a man? Kuna mtu. Is there a man Kuna mtu. that can take the book and lose the seals thereof? Na and miuri. the Bible says na nasema, there was no man mtu. but 1963 Jeffersonville there was a man kuna ah, mtu. there was a man kuna mtu. there was a man After God created everything, it says, and there was no man to till the land. And God took the man of Genesis 126 and put him in Genesis 2-7. And man became a living soul. We are back again in those days where we have found the man that showed John the book of Revelation. Come up higher. We are going beyond the church now. Hallelujah. We are going beyond the heart. Hallelujah. We are no longer on our way to a mouse. We are now in the house. He is now breaking the bread. And we can see this way of breaking of bread. He has done it before. I know who he is. He is not a man. I know who he is. Samuel is not a priest. Samuel is a prophet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you see the oil in the end time, oh, I feel like preaching now. Amen. When you see the oil in the end time, then you know it's the ministry of Jesus Christ. Hey, may God bless you so much. God bless you. God bless you. I end here.